Surviving for 100 years in the same 1924 building in which it began makes the municipal market a rarity in our city. Having been quickly embraced by Atlantans, it remained the undisputed destination of choice for Atlantis food shoppers for over 30 years. To be fair, the city of Atlanta in the first half of the 20th century was a very different city from what it would become. Atlanta was smaller, downtown denser, and food shopping opportunities were less abundant. It was the mass migration to the suburbs which began in the 1950s that signaled the beginning of the municipal market's decline. And by the end of the 1960s civil rights era, the municipal market was in trouble. For the next three decades, the historic building would experience one Save by the Bell moment after another until an infusion of Olympics renewal money in 1993 brought new life and stability to the badly aging building. Today, the municipal market is still defying the odds by doing exactly what it has done since its inception. My name is David Bennett. I am the executive director of the Atlanta Municipal Market Corporation. We have 30 or 40 vendors here, uh, tenants, and uh, 60 or 70 contractors who come and service the market and keep it running. The Municipal Market is a uh, facility that's been around for 100 years and actually is, is actually performs the same function today that it did 100 years ago. It provides fresh food access, it creates jobs, and it is a center where entrepreneurship happens. In addition to providing fresh food at competitive prices for folks who have few grocery shopping options, the 21st century municipal market is in a position to help local entrepreneurs develop their businesses. What makes the market the unique opportunity for, for a new business is that the, as they call it in the business world, the barrier to entry is very low here. So the startup costs are very low. As the people who start here would not have been able to ever start in the regular retail world um, because it's just too expensive. If you were going to go into your standard food hall, for example, you would expect to normally spend $100,000 plus on a build out. And then you pay substantial rent as well. Here, people move in for a fraction of that cost. I mean, ten or fifteen thousand dollars, sometimes even less, depending on what space they're occupying. And um, our rents then are much lower than those places as well, because we're a public service. We're not a real estate investment, and so we're trying to generate enough money here to pay the bills, but create the opportunity for those people to found a business. As gratifying as it must be to be in a position to help local entrepreneurs get a foothold in the world of business. The real value of the market is as it has been since the first farmers set up shop out on the curb in the wake of the Great Fire of 1917 and sold food to people in need. If the food market were not in business, a large part of the old Fourth Ward and downtown Atlanta would sorely miss its presence. I'm not even sure when the term food desert appeared in the world. <laughs> However, uh, downtown Atlanta is a large food desert. So there is, the closest grocery store to here is probably in Midtown. There is definitely not a grocery store on every corner everywhere. Um, when you're in the suburbs, in the wealthy subs or suburbs especially, that's largely true. But when you get outside those areas, then there are vast arrays of places that don't have clear access to good fresh food. And so places like this are incredibly important to provide that to people. Over the years, the market has adapted to the area's changing demographics and needs, and today's municipal market is no longer just a place to buy fresh food. This market really has two sort of almost distinct businesses in it. So um, today, it's nearly half and half food hall uh, and retail. The food hall side has grown over the years. Today, there are roughly a dozen restaurants in here. The retail side has multi-generational shoppers who've been coming here forever and um, are long-time uh, customers of the market. In addition to providing funds for much-needed infrastructure updates, the Olympics renewal money breathed new life into the aging market and set it on an evolutionary path into the 21st century. So the building has two floors to it. 
The main service floor has all the businesses on it, where all the customers go. But underneath the building, there's a whole sort of two-thirds size of the building in the basement, and that is all service areas. It includes three dozen coolers and freezers that serve the tenants in the market. There's a ton of service area for all the sprinklers and the water systems and the pipe systems and the wiring. There's various dry storage space down there as well. On a normal year, uh, the market spends about $200,000 fixing broken things. Uh, that is largely because the, the pipes and all the things that run the building um, are old. And in fact, the 93 renovation didn't start over. It just built things and changed things. And so there's plenty of original equipment here that's 100 years old. And if you just sort of cast that forward, any commercial property, 30 years is a long time to go without a, um, a revamp. As of the making of this video, the future of the 100-year-old municipal market is undecided. The matter is in the hands of the city council, but objectively, it is easy to understand the critical role the curb market plays in the lives of so many who can daily be found in the Sweet Auburn neighborhood and the broader downtown area. To say that the municipal market is a lifeline is an understatement. It also does not do justice to the potential of the municipal market as a catalyst for continued renewal of one of Atlanta's most historic and important neighborhoods. With vision and commitment, the municipal market could become a major Atlanta tourist destination akin to Seattle's Pike Place Market, Philadelphia's Reading Terminal Market, or the Los Angeles Grand Central Market and it could become a critical link between the Martin Luther King Jr. Historic District and the western ends of Edgewood and Auburn Avenues. There once was a time when every major city had a city-owned marketplace serving locally produced products to its citizens. Today, Atlanta is one of only a few cities that can make that claim, and it would be a shame not to take advantage of the opportunity we have before us. This is Lance Russell, and that is one of the stories of Atlanta.